Yo, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another Minnesota Twins discussion video and in this one we are going to be covering two different topics. Of course, we all know about Michael Pineda and his 60 game suspension. So we're going to be talking about that, how this affects the Minnesota Twins moving forward in the playoffs coming up as well as the trade for Ryan Lamar. Of course, we had him last year. We're going to be talking about how that might impact the team as well. So, stick around for that. I'd love to hear your opinions down in the comments as well now that we have more information about, well, both topics. But let's just jump right into this. Of course, I couldn't do this yesterday or the day before because I was at the Twins game and then moving back to Lincoln. So, we're going to be covering Michael Pineda first. And uh, the Twins released a statement the other day uh, that the Twins have issued the following statement regarding today's announcement by Major League Baseball that right-handed pitcher Michael Pineda has received a 60-game suspension for a violation of the Joint Drug Prevention and Treatment Program. And then they go on to say, We are disappointed to learn of the suspension of Michael Pineda for violating Major League Baseball's Joint Drug Prevention and Treatment Program. We fully support the Major League Baseball's policy and efforts to eliminate banned substances from our game per the protocol outlined in their program. And the Minnesota Twins will not comment further on this matter. So that is the Twins statement that they released Saturday. Uh, and if you don't know, um, maybe you've lived under a rock. Maybe you're like me and just haven't had time to really dive into stuff lately. But the Twins, of course, lost Michael Pineda because of a diurotic. Is that how you say it? That's how I'm going to say it because I can't say words. But uh, a diuretic that uh, was supposed to manage his weight. Uh, at least that's what he said in his statement. He did not know that that certain pill medicine thing that he took was going to violate the drug and policy, uh, you know, violation, the program that they've put in place. So I'll read you Michael Pineda's statement now. I'd like to begin with my sincere apologies to the Twins organization, the fans, teammates, and my family for my error in judgment. I mistakenly took a medication that was given to me by a close acquaintance who obtained it over the counter and assured me that it would safely help manage my weight. I ingested a few of these pills without the consent of the twins' training staff. Testing revealed traces of elements of a, sub a substance called, I have really no idea how to say this, hydrochlorothanazide, uh, which is a banned diuretic uh, under Major League Baseball's testing program. It was a shock to me to hear, as I never intended to cheat the system, other players, or the opposing teams. While I was pleased that the attributor found that this was clear and convincing evidence to reduce my discipline, I realized that I am ultimately responsible for what goes in my body and therefore respect the 60-game suspension that remains. I hope that I can be an example to others on how important it is to check with experts before taking any substance from an outside source. Now, so what we can get from this statement that I just read on my phone and Major League Baseball statement is that it seems as if, one, they weren't on the same page, and two, they were. Because, of course, Michael Pineda obtained it from someone. Of course, he didn't mention who it was. And it doesn't say if it was a doctor, if it was somebody from the Twins organization, that they just didn't clear it with the, the training experts, or if it was you know his personal doctor. Um, but it is very unfortunate that you know, he did not check if that's how, what the story is going with. Uh, if, you know, the premises are true, um, that that's what they're going with. That is super unfortunate. Of course, you know, I think it's Burt Blylevin that managed or talks about his weight all the time. Not a big fan of that. Of course, Michael Pineda, if this is something that he has struggled with, you know, wants to keep under control. Uh, and, and of course, there are probably other ways to go about it than these pills, but I'm just saying that that is very unfortunate that that was the cause of his of a violation, right? Because, of course, we have to know that there are rules set by MLB. And, of course, maybe you guys agree with them. Maybe you don't. Of course, I'm my take on it, I'll just say it right now. If you're using steroids, that's obviously not right. But if you're doing something, again, if the premises are true from this story, then it should be okay because he's managing his weights. Now, again, he says he's not trying to cheat the system. However, do his stats say the same thing? Now, I am not a doctor. I am literally a YouTuber who <laughs> expresses my opinion to a bunch of Twins fans, you guys. So, of course, I know nothing about this sort of medicine, what it does, what it's supposed to do, the after effects, the side effects, any of that stuff. But if you do look at Michael Pineda's stats, 
this season you could arguably say that it is his best season and maybe again credit to the twin staff maybe he has been managing his weight not just from these pills but has gotten himself back to where he needs to be maybe it was the arm surgery the tommy john and maybe it you know has something to do with you know something totally xyz you know throw out in right field but arguably this is his best uh, season that he's had 11 and 5 a 4 ERA 26 starts 146 innings which is quite a lot compared or well compared to his last couple of seasons of course but also coming back from Tommy John uh, he's really done well his FIP is the same as his ERA at 4 a whip of 1.1 which is like the lowest the 5th 6th 7th 10th lowest something like that in Major League Baseball um, as well as a good strikeout to walk ratio everything like that but I specifically want to look at his last couple of starts. Now, we don't know, or at least I don't know. Maybe you guys do. Maybe more information has come out about when he started taking these pills. But if you look back throughout the season, yes, he did struggle at the beginning. Okay, maybe that was his arm. But recently, and I'm not saying again that this is from the pills or this is from what he's been doing, but he has been really good as of late. His last, well, I don't know, going back, let's just do this way. Going back to July 16th, the team has only lost twice when he has pitched. Both of those times, he did not get the loss decision. In what? What is this then? One, two, three, four, five, six times out of the last eight, he has gotten the win, improving his record to 11 and 5. Now, that is really good. Again, I'm not sure what this medicine does. But if you're looking at his stats, you could make the argument that, hey, he has been really good. Now, again, he's faced Miami, Texas, Chicago, Detroit, Oakland. Not great teams. So there's a lot of different things to look at, but it really does suck that this guy is going to be out for the playoffs. The last thing I'm going to mention, does this hurt the Twins? Yes, it does. Of course, Michael Pineda is probably our best pitcher right now. Uh, you know, Barrios has struggled. Oda Rizzi's, you know, iffy. Gibson has been hurt. Is this a blow to the Twins? Yes. But does it affect our season? I'm going to say no on this one. And the reason being is because you only need four, three or four pitchers for the playoffs. And of course, you want Michael Pineda in there. I mean, he honestly has been one of our best pitchers. But if Barrios can figure out what he's doing wrong, Oda Rizzi stays consistent. And then we even want to use an opener kind of thing with Gibson, maybe Dobnak, Thorpe. There are options, of course, because when we get to the playoffs, I do not want to see any of these rookies coming out of the bullpen, you know, to win us games. Not that I don't trust them. It's just I want May. I want Duffy. I want Rogers, Dyson, and Romo. Those guys need to come out of the pen. But on those third days, let's just throw in a different strategy of an opener. And of course, that's a different video for another time. But I don't think it necessarily hurts our season because... Yes, we do go down a pitcher, right? A good pitcher, but that allows another pitcher or two technically to step up, one being the reliever, one being to take his spot. You combine the two and you're not really losing anybody numbers wise. Of course, you're still losing a good pitcher, but what can you do? Okay, so that's my take on Pineda. Let's just quickly talk about Ryan Lamar. There's not a lot to talk about. Of course, he already got some game action with the Twins yesterday. Struck out to end the game. Maybe his fault. Maybe it's not. I really don't think he should have been in that situation for a lot of reasons. One, just getting to Minnesota yesterday, just like Dyson. He did not do good in his first uh, pitching performance. Same thing here. You're just throwing him right into the fire. But two, we did have him last year, so maybe he was familiar. I don't know. The point is, we require we acquired Ryan Lamar in a trade from the Braves for cash considerations. He's 30 years old, spent his entire season in AAA Atlanta, batted 311. That's pretty good. 24 doubles, 8 triples, 9 home runs, 53 RBIs, 55 runs, 38 walks, 19 stolen bases, and an OPS of 857 in 112 games. Now, this guy has been in the majors for a while, back and forth, uh, majors, minors, in 2018 with the Twins, he batted 263, five doubles, eight RBIs, eight walks, seven runs, and before he was designated with the uh, designated for assignment, he did one get a walk off in uh, in Puerto Rico, but two was traded to the White Sox uh, or was picked up by the White Sox, where he went 303 um, in his second part of the season. He didn't play bad. Now, was yesterday an indicator of how good he's going to do the rest of the season? 
probably not. He can't make the playoff roster, um, but he is a guy with some speed that can help our outfield. We've had a lot of injuries lately. This is a guy who is going to be able to play, I would think. He can play pretty much anywhere, um, but, you know, mainly in the outfield, I would guess. Uh, but, you know, Cave going down, they, they aren't going to push him because, you know, Buxton is already down, and they don't want to lose another guy in Cave who was kind of hurt uh, in, what, a couple games ago. So to get this guy, Lamar, who's been with the Twins before, knows the system, and can play pretty well, hopefully he can step it up and be a filler for the rest of the season and help out the 40-man roster. I mean, just quickly, I'll put this out there. I think the Twins are going to stay away from playing most of their starters, wrap up the series with, uh, with the division title, win that, but then just play it easy with their starters. Like, Buxton doesn't need to come back until the playoffs. Kepler, play him now and then. You know, Polanco, he can play every day. But everybody else, I mean, Sano, give him some time off. Crone, maybe play him. Get him hot for the playoffs. There's a bunch of different pieces that can be moved, but you don't want to be playing your starters every day at least if they're hurt uh, until the playoffs and then let them run from there. So that's what I got for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Lots to talk about, but let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Thanks so much for watching. Leave a like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.